this uh, new medication, the donanemab, actually the data indicates that people experience a 35% slowing in the progression of the disease. So most importantly, there's a big difference in the incidence of the side effects, which include microbleeds and also brain atrophy or brain shrinkage. Hopefully it'll be a uh, motivator for people to get checked out earlier. Welcome everyone to the Dementia Doc Podcast. I am Dr. Miguel Rivera, and I am joined by my wife, Ganga. And today we are going to discuss the latest medication for Alzheimer's disease to hit the market, the monoclonal antibody donanemab. Miguel, you mentioned that a lot of people are asking you, is that medication for my family member? Is it worth it? And we'll answer those questions at the end of the podcast. But before, let's paint the stage. Before this medication was available, what were the medications and how this one is different? Okay. So the typical medications for Alzheimer's disease are in two camps. There are the cholinesterase inhibitors, so medications like Aricept, Razadine, and Exelon. And uh, we also then have Memantine, uh, the other name for it is Namenda, and this one is an NMDA receptor antagonist, so it works on the neurochemical glutamate. Now, these medications literally were just providing symptomatic relief, so they could buy you some better function for some period of time, as opposed to this newer medication, the donanemab, that has been actually shown to slow down the progression of the disease. And please clarify, how is that different? Uh, because you mentioned that it still doesn't cure the disease. So if both the previous medications would slow down or buy some time, how is the new one different in this case? Yes, so that is a good question. So the medications like the Aricept and the Memat or the cholinesterase inhibitors like Aricept and Exelon and Namenda or Memantine, they can buy some better function for some period of time. However, that doesn't mean that they actually slow down the progression of the disease. And that is the, the big difference, is that you know the, the old medications can help for an indeterminate amount of time with, with uh, some things like as you know, my mom has been on memantine, and it's been you know great for her. But in terms of slowing down the progression of the disease, that has not really been shown. The, this uh, new medication, the donanemab, actually the data indicates that people experience a 35% slowing in the progression of the disease, and that's pretty significant. And when you say slowing down of the progression, what exactly happens? How does it work? So donanemab and the medications that end in MAB is for a monoclonal antibody. And basically what the way that these medications work is that they use the immune system to perform a certain action. So the donanemab uh, binds to the beta amyloid, so the insoluble deposits and that uh, uh, are in the brain of people with Alzheimer's disease, and it helps to clear them out. So it's basically addressing this issue of these uh, um, beta amyloid plaques that are uh, both in solution and that are also deposited in the brain of people with Alzheimer's disease. And by clearing out those plaques, they're able to slow down the progression of the disease. Now, you know, this is pretty important because what this tells us is that the beta amyloid plaques are not the only player in town, let's say, because otherwise, you know, there would be a more dramatic uh, difference. But actually, it, 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 so th there is something to it, let's say, even though the beta amyloid may not be the whole story for sure. Uh, but, but definitely by clearing out uh, the beta amyloid from the brain of, of uh, these participants, they were able to 
uh, slow down the progression of the disease. And this is pretty significant. 47% of people uh, did not decline for a whole year. I mean, I think that that is a pretty significant improvement. So what you're saying is that, as far as I understand, most of the research in Alzheimer's disease, dementia, have been, especially Alzheimer's disease, I would, th I would think, focused on the amyloid plaques. Like, hey, they are the reason, the cause, we need to get rid of them. But there is also a thought that maybe they're just the consequence and they're not the reason. Yeah, the dread, this medication targets them and there is some improvement, but also the percentage that is not improving may be pointing that there is something else beyond amyloid plaques. Yeah, and you know, we've known that it's not just the amyloid plaques, there's also tau. So the neurofibrillary tangles. And, you know, I know that there are other medications that are on the pipeline that are actually addressing tau, which actually may be an even bigger player than these uh, amyloid plaques. And what, what is also the difference with the medication that was approved not that long ago by FDA, but I know you were not super excited, the people that we usually listen to, neurologists, and we can link their podcasts on those medications. Uh, the Cambia, I think it was called. Yes. Uh, what's the difference in this one and the new one? So most importantly, uh, there's a big difference in the incidence of the side effects. Uh, which include microbleeds and also brain atrophy or brain shrinkage. And uh, the donanemab is much more benign in, in those instances. And um, also the donanemab is a more effective medication. The Lecambi, even though it was supposed to be addressing the same things, you know, taking out the beta amyloid from the brain and slowing down the progression, it really wasn't worth, it, it, there was not enough bang for the buck there. Uh, however, the, so the donanemab is a better tolerated medication and actually the effect on the slowing down of the disease process of Alzheimer's disease is more robust. Yeah, and if I would return to the comparison with Namenda and Aricept, those were not even touching the amyloid plaques, right? They were working only on acetylcholine Yes, that is correct. They had uh, zero influence, neither the cholinesterase inhibitors, uh, neither the memantine or namenda had any action at all on the brain pathology of either the beta amyloid plaques or the, neuro, the tau uh, tangles. So this medication is the very first one that begins to really target the brain pathology. No. Uh, the first... This is maybe the third iteration. The first one was Aduhelm. Uh, the second one was the Lecambi. And then now we have the Donanemab. And so the difference is the side effects and the stakes. Like what do you, the reverse maybe action that you can get from taking it, that this one is the safest so far. Yes, this one is the safest and the most effective. And like I said, pretty significant, you know. So they, they looked at three main areas in this particular study. They looked at cognition, they looked at activities of daily living, and they looked at amyloid clearance. And uh, they showed, like I mentioned, a 35% improvement in uh, the slowing down in terms of activities of daily living, which uh, it's, it's worth mentioning. So there are two different types of activities of daily living. There are the basic ones, which are things like, you know, being able to use the bathroom, their, you know, their ability to bathe themselves, their ability to, uh, to toilet, their ability to, uh, to walk, et cetera. And then there are the instrumental activities of daily living, which are things more like being able to pay your bills, being able to prepare a meal, being able to take your own medications, et cetera. So um, this medication was shown to... Uh, preserve the activities of daily living, like a 40% reduction in the decline of instrumental activities of daily living. So huge. And then the last one was the clearance of the beta amyloid. And I think it was like 40% of people or close to 40% of people experienced clearance of the beta amyloid from their brain within six months. But uh, that number jumped to 70% or 
after one year. And this is clearing out the beta amyloid plaques to the point where they're not considered um, to be clinically significant. So, you know, I mean, again, this was a, a pretty robust uh, study. And, uh, and I think that for, you know, what we have available in the market today, this is definitely a step in the right direction. What are the stakes or what are the possible adverse reactions, side effects to this medication? Well, you know, similar to the ones I mentioned on the Lacambi, so the incidence of microbleeds uh, and the incidence of brain shrinkage, the study followed patients for 18 months. So we don't have the whole story yet. We, you know, now that it'll come to market and you know, as it is used uh, by the general population, then we will know more about the actual incidence of significant side effects. But in general, like I mentioned, the donanemab seems to be more benign than the Lecambi with the, when it comes to those particular side effects. Yeah, so as far as I understand you, we, are, we could be getting excited that, hey, there is something that, that is working quite well. But also, we don't see the full picture as sometimes happens with medications that while they're being rolled out on the market, the side effects may come into play more vividly once it's in use. But so far, what that study showed, that there is a promise. Yes, and, you know, um, on, on those same lines, uh, I mean, again, it's important to remember that this study was done in people that had mild Alzheimer's disease, so mild symptoms. And, uh, but you know, there are so many people that are already in the moderate to severe stages of the disease. And, you know, can this medicine help? Well, we don't know. We, we have no idea whether it can be beneficial or not. Uh, the fact that this medicine can help slow down the progression in people with mild symptoms underscores the importance of getting checked out. If there's any problems, it's a great idea to go see somebody because as opposed to other uh, periods of time before the advent of this medication, now there is something you can do to actually slow down the progression. Yeah, and I don't know if that comparison is correct, but do you think it's similar when if people have cancer if the cancer is on our first, second stage, the treatment could be much more effective, let's say it's fourth stage. The same over here, if the person is at the beginning of the disease, the treatment could be more effective than once they're at the more severe stages. Yes, I mean, I think that that is a reasonable uh, position. Uh, the reality is that we, we don't know. You know, we don't know exactly how okay. somebody in their moderate uh, stages of the disease would respond to this uh, to this type of treatment and what the benefits of it would be. You know, I'm sure that the studies are will be forthcoming, you know, regarding that because, yeah. you know, there is a broad, you know, spectrum of symptoms, uh, you know, with within uh, Alzheimer's disease. And But uh, it is important to note that what we know right now is is basically only as it relates to mild Alzheimer's disease. But I think when you mentioned also that it underscores the importance of being checked out, uh, it's probably if we think of cancer, it's similar. Like a lot of people go and get mammograms or you know, check this and that. But when it comes to brain health, I think there is a lot of resistance sometimes to go and get checked just because, I don't know, for whatever reason, or maybe because there is nothing we can do but with medications like that po possibly emerging and possibly having a long-lasting effect, again, we don't know, it's possibly. But I think if we think about this as when people think of other diseases, then getting checked out becomes much more maybe appealing that there is something you could do. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, what would be the point of getting checked out if there's nothing you can do, right? So the yeah. fact that, well, I know that there is something that can conceivably you know, give you some real help. I, I think that, uh, yes, I hopefully it'll be a uh, motivator for people to get checked out earlier. Yeah, and of course, it's probably a topic for a whole different podcast. 
Uh, but as you said, like, I think most people think, why would I go get checked out if there is nothing I could do? But as we discussed before, even with no new medications, there is still something you could do to improve quality of life. Like it's still much better if you're moving in the darkness and then things spiral out of control. So whether with this medication or not, it's good to get checked out. But with medication like that being available or possibly even being more hopeful, again, we don't know, but it makes even more sense. Agreed. Yes. Well, and then you already mentioned that that's people with the mild symptoms or mild Alzheimer's disease. So then if people ask you, hey, Dr. Rivera, should I consider that? So how, what is your reply? Who are the people who would think, you know, maybe we should consider this medication? Okay. So th there's a few things that I would tell them. Uh, number one, it is what we just discussed that so far w the data that we have and what we know is for mild Alzheimer's disease. Number two, um, which many people don't realize is that this medicine is not associated with improvement. So people on Donanema do not improve in their cognitive functioning. They just decline more slowly. And, and it's a pretty good, you know, slowing down of the disease. Like I mentioned, you know, 47% uh, uh, will not decline in a whole year. So it's a pretty significant number. Um, but this is not going to improve anything. Like I got a call from a patient um, earlier this week that and the husband was saying, uh, you know, she's not any better. And I tried to explain to him again that she's she's not going to get better, but that this is just going to offer a slowing down of the progression of the disease. And do you know if people can take it together with the other medications? Yeah. Because as far as I understand, the other ones could improve some things. Again, they're not permanent improvements, uh, but they do improve some functioning. So if the person takes this medication and the other ones, do you think? Yeah, you, you can use them together. And actually, yes, you know, some, you know, a lot of patients that are enrolling in these studies are already taking some of those medications, particularly the cholinesterase inhibitors. Yeah. Okay. And if uh, you want to mo know more about the cholinest, you say that word, but basically the medications that are on the market and they have been on the market, like Arisap, Namenda, you can watch the video over here and we will see you in the next podcast. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.